In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to transform a 2D logo into a 3D animation using just Adobe Illustrator and Adobe After Effects. Let's begin. Hello everyone, my name is Elliot, also known as Eliano, and over the last few years, I've been experimenting with the built-in 3D tools within After Effects, and I've been able to create some pretty cool looking 3D animations in the process. So today I decided to give you guys a quick tip on how to turn some logos or icons into 3D animations. I'll show you how to transform a simple logo icon into 3D, as well as how to create a 3D logo with multiple elements. And this will all be done without plugins or presets. Version 1. Converting a simple logo icon. First you will want to open up a new Adobe Illustrator file, and set it to the size you want your animation file to be. In this case, I'll be making my file sized at 1080 pixels, both horizontally and vertically. Next, I'll bring in my logo icon, which is just a black and white image of the Nike logo. Once I've resized and placed the icon at the center of my artboard, I'm going to now separate the icon from the white background and convert this file from a raster image into a vector layer, which can then be directly brought into After Effects. With the image selected, you'll see these options at the top of your window. What we're going to do essentially is trace around the image to create a shape layer. To do this, click the arrow next to the image trace box, and you'll be given a list of options to choose from, which work differently depending on which type of image you have. With the image being in black and white, select the black and white logo option, then click expand, and now the logo has been turned into a vector layer. However, when you select it, it still has the white box around it. But if you click inside, you'll see there are two shape layers on our layer, one for the icon and another for the box around it. This white box will need deleting, so to do this, simply double click on the image to open up in isolation mode, and then make sure you're using the direct selection tool, which can be done by clicking the A button, simply just click the corners of the white box and delete them. And now that white box has been deleted and you have your icon ready to bring into After Effects. But first let's rename the layer to Nike logo and save the file as an Illustrator file so we can import it directly into After Effects. Once After Effects is open, drag your file into the project tab and make sure the import kind box is set to composition. That way the file will open up in its own composition when imported. Now the file is in After Effects, but by default it doesn't have any depth to make it look 3D, nor does it rotate on the Z axis, only the X and Y axis. That's because the file is still a 2D layer. So by checking this box underneath this cube icon, we have now turned our layer from 2D to 3D, which now means we can not only rotate the file on the X and Y axis, but also on the Z axis. But we still have an issue as it still just looks like a flat image and truly doesn't look 3D. That's because we need to convert our layer from an Illustrator file to a shape layer. To do this, let's restore that file back to a 2D layer by unchecking that box, and right click over the layer and select the option Create Shapes from Vector Layer. And now our icon has turned into a shape layer. However, when clicking the fill color, it doesn't appear at the top of our window. This usually means there's more than one group within our shape, meaning that our tracing in Illustrator wasn't completely accurate. This can sometimes happen with logos or icons which are curved. So just open up the contents tab in the shape layer and delete the group featuring the sections we don't want. Now we can change the layer's color from black to white, as I want it to appear over a black background. To add our background, let's add a new solid layer, colored black, and then place it behind our shape layer. So now that we've done all that, how do we actually make our shape layer look 3D? Well, just like before, we'll convert our icon into a 3D layer, and you'll now see a new set of option tabs appearing, geometry options and material options. We don't need to do anything with our material options in this tutorial, but we do need to access the geometry options on this layer. To do this, we need to change the renderer in our composition, which is currently set to After Effects' default Classic 3D. To change it, click the renderer link here and change the renderer to Cinema 4D when this window appears. This now unlocks the geometry options, which now means we can extrude our shape layer. Extruding is basically stretching the shape along the z-axis, making it look 3D. Now at the moment the shape doesn't look 3D, so we need to make the extrude effect a little bit more noticeable. There are two ways you can do this. The first way is to add a stroke to your shape layer. This can be done by clicking this arrow and selecting stroke from the drop down menu. And now all you will need to do is change the colour of the stroke layer to a slightly darker shade of your fill colour. By doing this you're making the extruded section of your shape much more visible. This works very well if you're trying to create a lo-fi poly 3D look to your animations. The other way to achieve this is by using lights within your composition. 
First, let's remove the stroke we just added to that layer, and then go to Layer, New, Light, and add a Spotlight. Your shape layer in 3D will automatically react to any light source in your composition. You can move your spotlight around by going to the transform options by clicking this drop down menu. You can change the position as well as the point of interest and rotate the light source on all three axes. You can also increase the intensity of the light if you want its effect to be a bit more noticeable. And you can keyframe any of the options to animate your light if you want. You also aren't limited to just one light, you can add as many as you want to your composition. Personally, I think with these animations, look best with at least two lights shining on both sides of your shape layer. And then, all you need to do is just animate your shape layer, either using the stroke color method, or by using the light source method. In this case, I'm going to have my shape layer zoom in and give a slight rotation on the Y axis, leaving my lights where they are. I'll start by adding two position keyframes on the Z axis, by changing this third number here, increasing the distance by a fair amount. Then I'll add a couple of keyframes on the Y rotation axis. I'll easy ease all of these keyframes and edit the speed graph so it has a quick zoom followed by a much slower zoom out. Then I'll add two keyframes to the scale, starting at zero and going up to 100, with the second keyframe placed around halfway through our composition. And edit the speed graph to make it scale in and out really fast. And before I forget, I'll add the rotation onto the Y axis to make it rotate as well as zooming into position. And just like that, you now know how to edit a simple icon logo. So now let's look at animating a slightly more complex logo. Version 2, converting an icon logo with text. Just like the first version, we will start off by opening up a new document in Adobe Illustrator and we'll import our logo into this document. Then resize and align the logo just as before and using the image trace effect to turn our raster image into a vector graphic. Then click expand and the logo will show all of the points of the paths in our vector shape layers. Once this is done, we'll delete all of the points of the white background by selecting the corners with the direct selection tool or by clicking A and deleting them one by one. Now, unlike before, we're going to separate each of our logo's elements into separate layers. If you're just going to animate the logo as one whole block, then you won't need to do this. But by doing this, you can animate each section individually, making much more interesting results. Double click on the logo to open it up in isolation mode. Now with some of these letters, the inside sections may have some white shape layers that we need deleting, such as the circles here. Just delete those once selected as we'll only need the outlines of the letters and icon. Select the whole of the first letter and copy it using Command plus V. Now you may also see some white sections appearing underneath the black icons. Just delete those as well as we won't be needing them. And then add a new layer, adding this icon here, and by clicking Command, Shift and V, it will copy your outline into its original place on this new layer. And then double click on the layer to rename it. I'll do the same thing for this letter as well. Now for the eye in the Adias logo, the dot is connected to the middle icon. I personally want both the eye and this middle shape to be separate in our animation. And thankfully, it's quite easy to separate these. Just select and copy that section and place onto a new layer and label it. Then take the connected part of the eye and place that onto its own layer and label it as well. Now we have the eye with the connected part on one layer and a duplicate on a separate layer. Lock the icon only layer and then delete the points on the eye layer which aren't part of the eye's dot using the direct selection tool. You can then reconnect these points to recreate the original square by just using the pen tool by adding another path point and aligning so everything matches up. Then lock that layer and do the same in reverse for the icon only layer, deleting all of the sections of the eyes dot and recreating with the pen tool. And then just separate all the other sections and add them to separate layers with them labeled, just like the first letter. Then save your document as an Illustrator file and you'll be ready to animate in After Effects. With After Effects open up, drag in your Illustrator file into the project tab. You'll then get this window and have it set to composition on this tab and layer size on this tab. You'll now have a composition with all the elements of the logo as separate layers. Just like before, right click over the layers, click create and select create shapes from vector layer. This will then turn all of our vector layers into shape layers. Change the fill on each shape with them all selected and then link them to a null object. Now we have the option to turn all of these shape layers once again into 3D shapes. You can turn all of these shapes into 3D layers by clicking this box on each layer just like before and make sure to do the same for the null object. Looks like I have a slight error on this layer, so I'll just use the pen tool to relink the shape and now that's all fixed. Now with all the layers selected, move up the extrusion amount. 
And then let's add a solid layer and place it at the back of our composition to create a background. Now you can use the outline method if you want to create a more lo-fi 3D, as shown with the previous 3D logo. Just make sure that you select a dark enough outline colour, but for this version I think I'm going to go with the light slash gradient version. So I'll add a couple of spotlights in just like before to both the left and right of the composition. Also another option to do is to add a light source behind the shape layers just to add a little bit more depth. And with our environment set up, we can now animate the logo. With our layers linked to this null object, we can use this to animate all of our shape layers at the same time, such as creating a rotation on the Y axis, shown here. But the beauty of this method is now we can animate each individual layer individually, making the logo appear section by section. I'm going to add a scale animation to the first shape in the Adidas logo here, with it scaling up from 0 to 100. I'll then alter the motion of this animation by converting the keyframes to Easy Ease keyframes and editing the speed graph so it looks like this. I'll then copy these scale up keyframes to all of the other layers, shifting the placement of the animation on each layer by a couple of frames, so that way each element will appear sequentially. And now that we have this null object, we can add an overarching motion to all of these shape layers. I'm going to add two position keyframes, moving the shapes on the Z axis, with both these keyframes easy ease and altered using the speed graph like so. And then I'll add two Y rotation keyframes with the placement and motion in line with the position keyframes. And just like that, I've been able to animate a 3D logo with several different icons and layers. It doesn't have to look like this, you can animate them in pretty much any way you can think of. And that right there is the end of the video guys, so thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to leave a like on this video, um, make sure to also comment, I would love to hear your guys' feedback, and make sure to click the subscribe button with the notification bell also clicked as well. Since our last video, we've managed to shoot up uh, by a fair bit. At the moment, we're now over 600 subscribers, and that is absolutely incredible. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. Um, it really, I really do appreciate it. And you guys will be glad to know that I am working on the EB Synth Rotoscope animation tutorial. I'm hoping to get that out um, within the next month or so. So hopefully that'll come out and hopefully you guys will enjoy that. But once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really did enjoy the video. I'll see you next time. Peace.